Okay, we are starting. How does this look? Is it looking okay and is it sounding okay? I might have to ooh, I might have to uh, play around a little bit with the volume especially because I'm trying a new setup here. Hello Eskil. Hello the cringe. Woo. So the volume is okay and th everything looks okay. So that's that that is fine. The levels look okay on the monitor. Oh. My eldest son is uh, uh, finding excuses to get the uh, song into conversations. So now I'm stuck with that on my mind. And now you're stuck with it as well. I think I will zoom out a little bit so that you can see a little bit more and just bear with me while I try to find the focus again. Yeah, then we're okay. Can you draw a dog with human legs eating string cheese? Then you have to go and comment that on the community post I posted just a little while ago. Because this is not the request drawing live. This is the learning how to draw live. So if you want to learn how to draw, j join us and we all learn together. Now, for those of you who... Oh, 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 I should also say, the request drawing live is on Thursday at 7 o'clock GMT plus 1. Uh, I mean, 19 o'clock GMT plus one. And I'm um, taking request and I will be putting up a poll. And if I finish the poll winner before the live is over, I will be taking requests directly on the live. Like uh, human legs eating string cheese. But that's on Thursday. Now, my name is Kim Diasholm and I'm an artist from Badigen, Norway, and I release art for free use. Everyone working with art is always trying to be better. And this live is me trying to get better and hopefully learning you a couple of things in the um, it, at the same time. Um, one of the books that I grew up with was this, Bridgman's uh, Drawing uh, Books. And I had these in a bunch of different colored smaller books, but now I have the complete edition. And we have done, this is the fourth live working with this book. And I've gone through this book many times throughout my life, but it's a good excuse to um, to actually, since I have an audience, I have to go through the book thoroughly, properly, not just skim through it because I've read it a hundred times before. So it's a good learning opportunity for me to have to uh, to have to explain things to you. If you want the full context of this and you know go into a bit of the problems and the strengths of this book then do go back to episode one this is a weird book it is kind of hard to use but it is also in my opinion the best anatomy book that i've ever encountered at least 
I always wanted to look into this drawing style. Yeah, so, so today I'm not going to be doing the ink drawing style that I'm most known for, but I'm going to do practice the penciling style that lies underneath the inking. So even though I'm not penciling the ink monsters, even though I'm improvising them directly with ink, my mind, my mind's eye, is constantly sketching imaginary lines, imaginary shapes, so that I'm, I'm sort of penciling in my mind's eye as I'm drawing the ink monsters or the ink shapes. And this is how I'm penciling. Okay? So the last chapter we looked at was about uh, how to measure. And I did say that we would do the last exercise there. But I have to write that down so I remember it for next time because I have to prepare the live to be able to do that. Now we've come to the chapter called Wedging, Passing and Locking. Pop and lock. Let us start reading. Uh, please give me some uh, uh, tips for quick pace portraits. Uh, draw hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of paces and draw them enough of them past and you will get uh, faster and these breakdowns are a way of approaching portrait drawing as well okay i'll ignore the comments for a little while and just read through this passage and then we'll draw quite a bit and then we'll uh, uh, answer a few more questions, okay? The upper and lower limbs are held in place on the cage and pelvis by mortis and tenon, called the ball and socket joint, and at the elbow and knee by, a gingl by the ginglimus or hinge joint. So these are the basic forms of joints. We have, we have the ball and socket joints and we have the hinge joints. The surrounding muscles by their position shape, uh, by their position, shape and size are capable of moving these joints in any manner that the construction of the joints permit. So you, your uh, muscles can't, this is basic, but your muscles can't move anything in any other direction than what your limbs are capable of you. As movement occurs and the body instinctively assumes a position suited to the taking of some action, so when you get the body prepares to take any sort of action, the muscles by contraction produce the twisting and bending of the muscles. Okay, so, so if you're you you are um, starting to, for instance, to walk or to point or to, let's say, I, I'm wanting to, I'm getting ready to do a karate chop. Then that's not just the arms doing that movement. It is the muscles contracting and putting the major, um, uh, the, the solid shapes of my body, which is, in this book is the rib cage, the th torso, I mean, and the head and the hip into the correct position for that. And that, that happens instinctively. Uh, in doing so, the muscles themselves expand, shorten and bulge, making smaller wedges or varied forms connecting the larger and more solid masses. This shortening and bulging of the muscles becomes an assemblage of parts that pass into, over and around one another, folding in and spreading out. It is these parts passing into or over each other that gives the sense of wedging or interlocking. This might be compared to the folds in drapery, where the folds change, they're outline change. So that is the 
essence of what he's talking about here. It's not about that you have uh, one muscle here and one muscle here and one muscle here. It is about how th the shoulder muscle here overlaps and goes around and into between the um, brachialis and the triceps, while the biceps goes in under here and in between the forearm muscles. So it's these different types of shapes. It's the shape that goes into something and it's the shape that goes folds over something. And these are the basic um, anatomical shapes that Bridgman uses to describe anatomy with his lines, okay? A form either passes around or enters into the outline of the visible boundary of a figure. So again, this, it, we're not talking about how the anatomy functions in real life. That, that is sort of underlying, sure. But what we're talking about is how we perceive or how we draw the um, anatomy in line art first, but also applicable to paint. Um, the visible boundary of a figure. It should be an indication of what it really is, the outline of a form. Within this outline, for the same reason, forms pass into and over other forms. They wedge, mortise and interlock. The outline of a figure may be drawn so that it gives no sense of the manifold smaller forms of which it is composed. Again, the outline of a figure may be drawn so that the sense of the figure's depth, of the wedging, interlocking and passing of smaller forms within the larger masses conveys to the mind an impression of volume and solidity. Okay, so, so basically what he's talking about here is if we are, I can go all the way here with the art, I think. Ah, need to get this away. So if we are to draw this one, you can go really all uh, like 90s superhero on it and start drawing every single, I mean, almost every single fiber of the biceps, the brachialis, the triceps, and how each of these uh, uh, meet each other. And I believe uh, if you learn, if you were into comics and trying to learn how to draw in the 90s, then you probably encountered Wizard Ma Magazine, where Bart Sears drew, uh, taught an anatomy class. And he basically did that approach. And that's okay. But what Bridgman is talking about is a much more essential simplification so it says that this shape overlaps this shape, which goes into this shape, which goes around that shape, which again goes around here and around. And in, uh, and that would be the the triceps would be uh, around this part. Uh, okay, I messed up the triceps. Hi, hi, hi. Greetings from California. Hmm? There. Uh, oh, oh, thanks for the slide. Excellent. So let's try first to do some of the basic sketches 
that Bridgeman is doing. So these are look really funny. So it's just the, the, the box of the head and the the sort of a torso figure here and the uh, stomach and the butt and I think and this is why this book is a little bit hard is because not all since it was compiled from notes and sketches and not really written as a cohesive work it's not always easy to figure out why the illustrations are where they are but I think what he's doing here is showing some of the major forms in which other forms go in and out of okay which is why also he starts uh, getting into more detail in the next little sketch more detail of how these uh, muscles interlock without actually drawing the muscles and then you know we had this arm here here he's drawing it from the other side from behind but it's still just indicating the major shapes which will go into and out of each other okay That's kind of how I already draw, though I'm still learning. So this is kind of how you already draw. In that case, that's a good start, I think. I think this is a method which allows a lot of freedom in how you do your anatomy. Okay. So let's uh, toss this paper away and let's start looking at some of these. This one, I have no idea why it's there. Is that the part here? Probably something. But that, that's one of the problems with this book is that might be there from another lesson and or from something he talked about, which isn't included in the notes so there might not be any context for it and uh, yeah that's a huge problem it, and it's why it's better to draw from the book and learn by drawing rather than trying to figure out each lesson okay so it's a book that you can learn by copying by drawing you can copy it slow you can copy it quick you can copy it and then add detail or just tweak it and uh, yeah that's how we learn uh, what pencils do you use uh, this is a HB pencil I generally prefer a much softer pencil like this one which is a 3b I hate red and blue pencils I've never understood them um, I've uh, I know that um, a lot of people in uh, uh, concept art and in animation and in advertising love um, love love the red and blue pencils I've never gotten it and I think um, Bridgman is one of the faults there because that is very much uh, created for more uh, for softer artistic mediums like a soft pencil or charcoal that was 
pen, uh, soft pencil, uh, soft graphite and charcoal was what Bridgman used when teaching the classes. Uh, and it's a style that it's very hard to do this with a... Now, if I switch to a pen, it will be much harder to do this. Now we've forgotten to talk about what the, is happening here. So the important details here is how the, this form goes into that and then uh, the butt overlaps, goes around the thigh and yeah. And here, these might also be kind of random why they're put in there, but they're very cool to draw. I really love these small ones. Animator Bob Klein was a big fan of the red pencils. Uh, yeah, it, it is very much uh, integrated in the uh, in the the, the the animation school of thought, and a lot of. the people who started animating in New York, uh, where, I mean, Popeye cartoons and Betty Boop and uh, a lot of other uh, animations were drawn in New York. And they would likely have passed through Bridgman's classes. And so there is some similarities here. And if uh, you have ever, uh, I've talked about this on all the lives, I think, but if you've ever seen Andrew Loomis's books, then he was a student of um, of Bridgman, but his work is much more, or it's less about um, the art itself and more about its application to advertising and that is why it's so useful for people working with concept design and with uh, with, with computer games with, with uh, comics and all of that because those are more uh, more geared towards a reliable production while well, this is more geared toward an artistic expression and there's nothing wrong with either of those and, and I mean uh, I've talked about this before but uh, Will Eisner studied a little while with uh, with um, Bridgman and um, I have to check if Bern Hogarth did uh, uh, Frank Rosetta did, uh, John Buscema did, uh, Jack Kirby probably was, uh, uh, if he was never in the classes, then he probably, and I don't remember, so sorry if I'm saying anything wrong, but, but he was at least exposed to materials from the classes. Frank Rosetta was, I don't know, I don't know if anyone knows if he ever was in the classes because he kept tight about ever being educated in any sort of way. But we have uh, uh, sketches of Frank Rosetta based on Bridgman's stuff. So he was, and you can sort of see it in his anatomy as well. So, so. These things are hugely influential outside of what Bridgman did as well. Okay, now we've done these figures. I don't really know how much they had to do with the wedging and locking, which is one of the problems of the book, but they were fun to draw. So, yeah. So let us see a little bit. This one looks more like 
a tutorial in wedging and locking. Uh, we, we'll start. No, we'll, we'll actually we will try to start as the book said by putting up a bottom and a top, and uh, then doing the solid shapes first. So remember, according to Bridgman, as long as you place the solid shapes, which is these three shapes, remember this guy? He's got a hip problem. <laughs> so as long as you place the three solid shapes, you have everything you need to draw the rest. So we start with these, and then from these solids, we will start doing the rest. And here we're seeing that it shows how the... And this isn't a, an accurate description of how the muscles actually uh, actually are under the skin. It is about the impression the muscles give on the surface of the skin in that position. So in that position, the thigh muscle will create a shadow here and the uh, 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 knee will stick out. And then again, this muscle wraps around and we missed a little bit uh, on the height here, but that's okay. Then we just adjust. Okay. Is everything clear so far? If I'm rushing over anything and being unclear, then apologize. I apologize. You don't need to apologize. Never apologize unless you, you want to or you've done something wrong or, you know, apology is uh, in play. You know, you, you never apologize except when you do. Okay, so using this figure, we can also try to make it into a more complete figure. Again, here you see the overlapping. And you can see, how is this leg going? I, by analyzing it, sorry, oh, Sorry, not sorry. By analyzing it, you can see it's not going like that leg because then you would have this overlapping here. You don't have that there, which means that muscle isn't um, bulging, it is stretching. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'll, I'll find the word later. So, so that means th the knee is bent. Okay. And here we have to remember the earlier part of the book. Uh, where we talked about the active side, which is here. And then the passive side, the active side, then the passive side. And how that's what creates the dynamics in the figure. And again, this isn't based on how reality is. It's sort of close to how reality usually appears to be but it's a way of drawing dynamically, okay?
extended uh, opposite of contracted yeah that uh, contract was the word i was looking for for, for uh, i think stretched and contract no contracted and i i, I mean the my mind is words 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 to quote the poet fab caught you again joined your patreon last week and you here one here who hasn't it's worth it to support making more free art yes please do consider supporting um me by joining the patreon or becoming a youtube member i'm working towards doing so that whether you support me on, on patreon or on youtube or anywhere else um the the bonuses you get are the same all over and none of those are, you know, I'm not making full content for uh, uh, the backers. I'm just doing small things that hopefully are interesting to you and also um, hopefully are uh, useful to me. So now we have to analyze what's happening with this here. How is that arm going? And I would actually guess, based on how far this is going back, I would guess that it's actually holding something like this back. And then you could even extend the other arm like this. I just got here. We're not almost done, are we? No, loads left. Loads left. We've been going for how long have we been going? And also do remember to remember to uh, hit the like button, to comment and to support either by joining the Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or by going to denungeherrhorn.com and buying originals, merch, or prints, or just downloading my art for free use. Now let's get back to the bridgemaning. These are awesome studies. Thank you. So. Oh, hi. So, I think this is a more or less decent version of that. Okay, let's try this one on for size as well. Again, let us do the method that Bridgman tries to teach in this book. Start with the bottom and the top, and first place the solids and place them Correct. So, like on this figure, the solids have only, they're all boxy, they're not detailed. It's boxes upon boxes. And for instance, here, I'm, um, I r read this a little bit different than I think it was intended. It's sort of a little bit looking up, I think. And here, the box is sort of something like this. And then, yeah, that comes together sort of something like that, okay? And then we start placing all these wedges uh, and interlocking and wrapping around, okay? So, no details in the face, we don't need that, but we need this throat shape and the muscles that are sort of 
wrapped a little bit around and then goes into the head. And then we need the shoulder muscles, which the, the other, the neck muscles go into the shoulder muscles. Again here, which is why here the shoulder muscle overlaps, while here it goes into. Bob Boxy Body, yes. And again, this shoulder goes into the middle of the uh, triceps, no, the, the biceps, which goes into the Now it's, he's touching that guy's ass. That's very inappropriate. If the character was not m muscular... Yeah, so if the character is not muscular, the, all the principles are exactly the same. So we can try to do exactly the same with a non-muscular character afterwards. Remember, it's just muscles, go, uh, uh, shapes going into other shapes and going around or interlocking. All it is. Now I'm getting sloppier with these sketches. So let's not do too much more on this page. Just while sketching, think about how the muscles pass in or around each other. Let's try to do the same Pose, but with a, uh, a very obese person, okay? So the main shapes are exactly the same. Oh, should I do more like this? Yeah. The main shapes would be exactly the same. So it's the same boxes we used for the previous character. Um, and it's the same twisting and turning. And it's the same limbs attached to that body. The difference is the amount of muscle and fat under the skin which is covering things. So for instance you might not get this really good sense of how the neck muscles go into the shoulder muscle and you might get another type of overlap for the... Now, he, so far he's very muscular, this guy as well. And some of the things might get very much obscured, but you'd get things like... Mm. 
uh, the same points overlapping and that's where the skin would also start folding if there is enough body mass on it. So when the character is like this, then basically his back is a little bit like this and his front is like that. That means this is the passive side and this is the active side in the drawing, which means the folding of the fat would happen here, while here it would be stretched, okay? And then underneath here, the The, the thigh would still bump up a little bit against the belly. Forearm would still go into the over, uh, upper arm. And you'd also, for instance, in a person with much extra fat and skin that might even overlap somewhat over like the the elbow or the knees but it's still some shapes going into and some shapes going out of okay so basically same drawing technique different body size a lot of the muscles won't be um visible in the same way but the um the basics are the same and this idea of a active side and a passive side would also inform where and how the different bulges of the body would go Ooh, the different bulges of the body. And the re uh, just to s say something here. Now, I haven't practiced enough anatomy the last many years. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this is to again learn more about anatomy there are other artists who are masterful at this stuff in a way that i've never been so for more in-depth lessons i would go to them i mean, I mean people like steve houston uh, uh, um, the guys over at uh, proco tv or there's so many people online teaching magnificent anatomy and i'm trying to learn an interesting anatomy again here we see the active side the passive side and it's very efficient when uh, active side passive side very efficient when uh, Bridgman does it like this. So many interesting bulges. Oh my, what an interesting... No, I can't do that. Uh, sorry. And if you look at something like this, the point isn't being accurate. The point is to accurately give the impression, okay? Uh, the lesson here is to sit down and practice something you're not versed in. But it's a great example. Uh, uh, I have to say that I am versed in anatomy. I am not uh, 
it's not something I've cons I considered I considered myself as having mastered. So, for instance, with um, uh, ink uh, brush techniques, I consider that I have a certain degree of uh, mastery, which is uh, which is nice to have. Uh, but uh, with this, uh, I have not mastery, but perhaps proficiency. Okay. And, and the interesting thing is that even though I'm doing a lot of mistakes and a lot of um, there's a lot of things I could improve. I think I'm both doing this and understanding this better than the last time I went through this book. Yes, I just mean you don't do it every day. You're a great inspiration. I should do this every day. I should do this every day. But I don't have the time. Sorry. Oh, yay. Ooh, we have a lot of pages. These are just magnificent, weird drawings. And we'll just... This you can see is the... Stick man, the box man, and uh, but it's just so lively, and I'm not sure all of these drawings were originally to this lesson, and if they were to this lesson, I'm not sure they were to illustrate the points that got written down in the text. That is one of the problems of the book, as I'm always coming back to. But they are magnificent, and they are so fun and weird to copy, and sometimes when you copy them, you notice that, ooh, this is actually... Ah, he's doing this here, for instance. Again, uh, anything that is uh, unclear, just give me a shout and I'll try to explain it better. And sometimes, of course, the explanation will be actually we covered that last time. That can also be a good reminder to go through the basics and uh, yeah and here you see the super simple box shape and it's these and I've never been quite I never quite understood how Bridgman does the hip box. It seems counterintuitive to me. Uh, but I think I'm getting closer to understanding it, so good. And that's also something that's very important to, to realize. Like Andrew Loomis took Bridgman's classes, but his way of both drawing anatomy and teaching an anatomy is his way. It's not Bridgman's way, because you adapt the uh, what you learn to your own style. Um, when you look at, uh, if you compare the comics of Will Eisner and Frank Rosetta, you can see that both of them have 
gone to Bridgman's classes and for both of them it was a huge influence on their art. But their styles are uniquely their own. There is never a second where you believe that a Will Eisner drawing is a John Bushima drawing or the other way around. And that also goes for the way in which they render and build their anatomy. Bushema's is very much closer to He's closer to Bridgman, he's closer to the classical master style. Uh, he's extremely loose in his sketches, but with uh, an accuracy. Um, while Will Eisner is equally loose in his sketches, and not, actually not that loose in his sketches, but looser in the finished piece and uh, yeah it is it, more cartoony more uh, more bendy more exaggerated shapes and so sort of uh, Bushema has taken Bridgman style and also added uh, to his comic book style a more classical anatomy. So he's added detail and precision to the Bridgman uh, method, while Eisner has simplified it and made it, it cartoony. So uh, yeah. I'd be surprised if Prosetta wasn't a acolyte of Bridgman with a whole muscle towering tower thing going on. Yeah, so so uh, I haven't been able to verify whether or not Prosetta actually took Bridgman's classes, but he did have studies and copies of drawings you find in these books. So at least he studied the books, and it's also very likely that uh, he would have gone through uh, the classes. Uh, it's the right time, and uh, he would have been kind of young. Uh, it's the right time, and it's the right place. And it's obvious a huge influence, yeah. And, you know... What we're thinking about here when we're sketching these shapes is what goes into and what folds around. And that's all we're thinking about in this particular, these particular sketches. We don't need all the other stuff. We just thinking about which shapes go into, which shapes uh, wrap around. Here comes a kickflip! <laughs> oh, my big accomplishment uh, on skateboard while probably like 10 years old was that I once managed an ollie kickflip. That was as long as I ever got. Gonna disappear now. Thanks for a very interesting stream. Thank you. I need to get better at establishing movement with form. These have life and it's wonderful to watch. Yeah, so that's one of the thing that is things that is so uh, wonderful with Bridgman is the life that it, it has. And, and one of the explanations that I've talked about in previous uh, lives is that he drew the 
Some of these are student drawings. Some of these are uh, Bridgman's own uh, sketches on regular paper. And a lot of these are uh, sketches that he did in front of a class that were elevated uh, perpendicularly from, from the ceiling. And he was a tiny little man, so he uh, stood with a long stick and a pencil, a thick pencil or coal uh, piece, on the edge, uh, end of the stick, and drew up above himself in the ceiling and produced things like this. My friend accidentally did a front flip of a skateboard when she hit a cherry seed. I've never managed an ollie. Someday, someday. Ooh, I, I almost forgot. This f little figure. I, I, I'm just going to do some of these extremely rough because what I'm noticing is where the shapes go into and around. That's all we need for today. Okay. Enough of these pages. Even more pages. This is one of the most macabre drawings I've ever seen. What the hell is going on here? Again, that's also some of the fun of this book is it it's not clear why the hell this drawing is in there. That sounds incredibly difficult to draw something like that. Yes, it, it does sound incredibly difficult, but it does um, explain why some of this art is like it is. It has a looseness that you n n wouldn't necessarily do if you were preparing artwork for a book. Now, this sketch is not done in the ceiling, but something like this or this could be done in the ceiling. I've never, I, uh, have yet, uh, I've actually have yet to learn to skate. It's one of my New Year's resolutions, though. Good luck with that. I, uh, a, a couple of years ago, I stood on a skateboard for the first time in many, many, many years, and I noticed the increasing anxiety of age. If I fall, I think this is basically to illustrate how the, what's that muscle called? These are the laterals. Um, did you read Divine Comedy by Dante? Uh, no, I haven't read the whole of it. I've read parts of it and summaries of it, but I, I find the it, very difficult to read, especially since, you know, it's all political allegory and satire of characters and uh, politicians and merchants and nobles that we have no idea about anymore. I had rollerblades as a kid because my mother was paranoid about skateboards. Um, yeah, so in Norway, actually, um, skateboards were illegal until I think 1988. Uh, and that's when we got skateboards, when I was eight years old. Uh, a 
how old is Bridgman's book? So these are a collection of a number of books. The first one was published, I think, 1919 or 1920, and the last one either in the mid-40s or, uh, I think, 1942 might have been in the 50s, early 50s. Let us see here. 35, 42 is the last one, and 1920 is the first one. Why were skateboarding illegal? Because in Norway, a lot of stuff was illegal. If it, there was any sense of danger around uh, stuff, it would be uh, deemed illegal very quickly. I mean, uh, uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian was promoted as uh, the film so funny it got banned in Norway, which it did. Uh, Norwegian ha society has changed a lot from 70s and 80s. Hi, Kim. How much do you know about Aztec, my mythos not enough i've been researching it on and off uh, for a few years uh, but definitely not enough yet i do want to do things about quetzalcoatl and about uh, um, Huitzilopochtl and about all the different stuff and about the the, the blood and the sacrifice and the marvelous architecture and it's sort of a proto empire building and uh, all that stuff uh, and it's very interesting and I even did write and draw some things about conquistadors and about uh, about um, uh, Quetzalcoatl, but I never published them because I wa was never, you know, a hundred percent happy with how they turned out. I mean, with the um, Conquistador script, I had the idea, but I never managed to cut it down to work in less than a minute. So that was that problem. Yeah, the book is Bridgeman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life. And it's a collection of the smaller Bridgeman books. And you know, I don't know especially much about this edition. The print isn't ter terribly good. I don't know who has the rights or uh, ba, 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 ba. Sterling Publishing seems to think they have the rights. It's probably something you can find online. N nudge, nudge, know what I mean? Is this one book or different parts? This is uh, four or five books put together. A and none of these books make completely sense uh, because of how they were written, but go back to episode one of these lives for that story, because I've told it too many times would be great to see such illustrations of the Conquistadors and Quetzalcoatl should you decide to publish them. The, I think the art is uh, actually up in the Ink Monster Gallery, but um, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, the videos never got published. I think. Um, I think the problem was I had a thesis that I wanted to do and, and 
basically the conquistadors ones was i mean telling about the kind of insane bloodthirstiness of the aztec empire and the human sacrifice and the plain awfulness and the hunting of nearby populations and uh, all of that stuff telling about all of that and then saying that 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 there was good reason why so many of the surrounding peoples uh, to the Aztecs joined the Spaniards in fighting the Aztecs. But they couldn't have imagined that what would come after would be even worse. That I need to figure out how to place this mic and how to not be out of camera all the time. Or maybe I should just zoom out a little bit. I enjoy watching you make your art, I guess. There is always a heart over... It's poor design. I always see a heart over the uh, lower lowest comment. Thank you for bringing more beauty to this world. Thank you for saying. I'm starting to understand the point of these drawings more and more. It is, especially in these shapes, how these muscles, instead of drawing the full six-pack, how they are like a field which other things can overlap over. Interesting stuff though, you've done your research well. That is, I, I try to... I didn't always try to do my research well, but, but the more people have I feel a greater uh, pressure to do proper research uh, now that I've done some researched videos. A and it would be sort of a betrayal if I started presenting things which are dubious I mean, I'm sure I, I get things wrong. I mean, I'm not a scholar. I'm not an ap academic. I get things wrong. Uh, but it would be a betrayal if I just started getting sloppy in my uh, in my um, in my research. Sorry, the brain is starting to slow down. Yeah. Finished with this one. Your content is very refreshing compared to most things on YouTube. Just would like you to know. Yeah, that's um, what I'm aiming at, so to speak. Um. I'm deliberately trying to do things that uh, are outside the established YouTube and you know, other social media um, formulas. Uh, not because uh, uh, I, I don't think there's value in them, but, but because I think First of all, it's fun <laughs> uh, to try to do, do things that are at least slightly new or different in a way. Second of all, I do think that, that, that if you are an artist on social media, you have an advantage no other content creators naturally have 
And that is the ability to do things totally unique, totally you. And, and that's what I'm trying to find. I mean, uh, no shame on Mr. Beast or Mr. Who's the Boss or any of the giant YouTubers, but they they all, or, or someone like Age Bomber Guy, fantastic content, fantastic, uh, super smart, politically astute, great storyteller, great editing, awesome stuff. Uh, but in the end, the things he do, the, the things he do is a variety on the same type of YouTube video essayists with a little bit of his personality sprinkled on top and done better than most anyone. But as an artist, you can create a whole universe of your own, in a sense. So that that's that, that's at least what I'm thinking right now. It's hard. I haven't gotten much traction on my long form videos yet. Uh, there are obvious reasons for that. The most obvious one is that they're not quite as good as my short form ones, but I'm learning and I'm trying to find my personality there and I'm trying to also do uh, things that are more and more special with the shorts and hopefully have fun in the process. Proko is great art YouTube. Yeah, Proko is fantastic and, and a lot of people have said to me, why can't you just do art tutorials? And one good reason why I can't just do art tutorials is Proko. I would have to start competing, of course, c competing in a friendly manner. I mean, Proko is great about um, taking loads of different artists who have their own teaching platform and giving them a, uh, a, um, a spotlight on Proko. So, so it's not so, uh, the, the competition part is friendly, but, but I, if I did tutorials, I would have to compete with the quality of the stuff that's shown on Proko. And uh, quite simply, I'm not good enough. But I am good at some other things. Have you heard of Jessa? He's done cartoons. Yeah, also magnificent, so incredibly well, charming uh, and also great storyteller and just plays around and do things that are very mass appeal, very good at getting viral, all that stuff. Magnificent. Love. Uh, uh, Jassa. Bro, you get better set up and you are definitely good enough. In terms of good enough, at teaching, at doing tutorial content. I'm not arguing about art skills because, uh, you know, uh, both uh, Proko and uh, uh, Jazza can probably do a lot of things I can't do, and I can probably do a lot of things they can't do. I prefer my art style, which is why it's my art style. And I guess, I hope, Jazza and Proko prefers their art styles. Now, it is very simple like that. But, um, yeah. I think we can skip these. Um, the foot here is interesting. But I, I, I'm... 
in terms of making edited short form and long form educational content for the YouTube platform. That is a huge skill that I don't have. And I'd rather use my time making my type of video art. What are we drawing? We are learning to draw from Bridgman's complete guide to drawing from life. And we're just about, ooh, we have even more sketches to do here. Okay. Any comment on Indian uh, mythology? So are you s talking about, um, are you talking about uh, Hindu mythology? And then that's also a, a I issue where I, I have done a lot of research, but I feel I need to do more research. Oh, th yeah, this is... Uh... Um, Proko is great, but one of the hard things about it isn't the understanding, but the applying stage. As uh, you might understand every word, but application still requires a large d degree of skill. Yeah, so, so uh, any tutorial that's 10 minutes or... 30 minutes or an hour on YouTube will suffer from being something that's, you know, it, it's meant to be understandable in a 10 minute package, in an hourly package. But these are things that take years to understand. Soul breaker gets a time out because that just seemed like spamming. Uh, bu 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 yeah, so so. Matema, you don't get a time out yet but uh, uh. Boop, 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 boom. This is my opinion on the subject of art and artists. I don't, don't think art is created. I believe it is manifested from the infinite source of all that is, which is everything that imaginably exists. That be, be, it feels like that sometimes. Whether or not it's true, it feels like that sometimes. And other times it feels like uh, it's your hard work. Uh, I think that truth can be both. Uh, we're studying art today. Uh, we are not ma making uh, anything. We're just sketching, studying art. So, studying Bridgman's complete, complete Bridgman's. Man, you are so fast. Yes, I draw fast and sloppy. That's my my forte. And yes, I have uh, I have taught classes. Uh, if like if my YouTube fame and uh, my YouTube um, uh, uh, blah, blah, my attempts at seriously making videos and video art for YouTube, if that had come, uh, I guess, five or six years earlier, yeah, six years earlier, 
than it came, then it would be much more natural to do uh, tutorials and classes because then a much bigger part of my day-to-day -day job was teaching classes. Not terribly much, but enough that it was something I was actively thinking about and it isn't anymore. No one for president, yes. Oh, I have no problem. Uh, I don't need to put the, I mean, time out. I just need to block. Hide user in this channel. Because if you go in here and say Trump 2024, I have no problems discussing politics or Trump or anything like that. But, but but if you come in here uh, and you say Trump 2024, if you say uh, uh, Stöder for life, if you say uh, uh, Jesus saves or only with Buddha can you find the way or anything like that, then your intention in entering the chat isn't honest. It is to disrupt by, to spread your message. And I don't want you here. And it has nothing to do with Trump or Jesus or Biden or whatever. It has to do with the intent of disrupting. Where can I get a pen like that? This isn't a pen. It is simply a uh, 3B pencil where I've cut off uh, a lot of it so that you have a longer uh, front. And that is designed to draw more, like holding it like this, like a lot of art school students does. I tend to hold it more in the comic book style, which is more like you write. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to do new things. One of which is shifting the grip. Bro, are you guys talking about who's going to be president? No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about spamming and trolling. We're talking about art. I love art. I love working with art materials. Sadly, I'm not good and have no time to practice because of a toddler and a baby. A toddler and a baby takes all the time. I, I know, I know. Uh, but the, the lovely thing is you don't have to get good at art. You just have to have fun. And then if you have fun for a long enough time, then you will get good. And you don't really... Some people start thinking like, oh, if I'm not good before I'm 25, then uh, it, it isn't worth it. But you have these examples of people who have started drawing at 40 or 50 or, or 60 even. And because they have been able to allocate the, <coughs> the time then and also allocate the <coughs> experience from life and because they have taken it seriously they've become really good in really short time and, and, and you know i've seen artists who started when they were 50 and know more about art than or about specifics in art than i do I didn't even start drawing until I was, was it 38? Yeah, you can start whenever you want. Here is also one of the fun things about this book. This is a wonky drawing. Look at that face. That is awful. But it is a side effect of how it's 
done. And, and still, I think this drawing is more useful, at least to me, than, uh, for instance, the Loomis. I, I don't mean to um, talk crap about the Loomis book. I think that is a very valuable uh, art book. But to me, this is so much more useful, even though it's sloppy. I will not draw either Quisling or Humson as... I don't know what El Kaganer is, but... Just started sketching out 29. Cool. Good luck. Have fun. Okay. Uh, let's see how long... Okay, we can do... Shall we do one more chapter? I said for... Uh, I said for a long time that I would do two chapters one day, and so why not now? Uh, yeah, yeah, so there is always some 13 year old kid who draws uh, better than most artists yes there is one of those kids was uh, Picasso who grew up to be one of the greatest artists of all time. And I think th there are stuff he did in, uh, in uh, early in life that's completely okay. And I don't get his adult stuff. I think that is boring and it is derivative of himself very quickly you know i i understand why he's big i think that's marketing <laughs> uh but you know uh and not to shit on you if you like because we all have different tastes but just an example you know magnificently technical artist at a young age, his work doesn't give me anything at all. There was a grown man acting like 13 year olds in the chat. Is it in this chat? Uh, except for you asking for all sorts of. Greven gal och dead som tre vise men eh. Your favorite comics or comics artist? Uh, you know, all my favorite artists are comic artists. Uh, you can see we've talked about John Buscema and Will Eisner, and you know even Frank Presetta's uh, comic work. Uh, but, but Buscema and Eisner, especially Buscema, is a huge favorite. Frank Miller is the most important artist. Uh, for my evolution, and, and still I love Miller's work. Uh, Sam Keith, uh, Simon Bisley, Merbius, uh, Hiroko Samura, um, Goseki Kojima, um, uh, bleh, so many, Robert uh, Crumb, so many. After some uh, do a metal so you know, Goya. I like some Goya, yes. Uh, 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 uh. Han special där du gör Goya. Det kan vara intressant. Uh, um, now I need to. If we were going to do one more chapter. I need to actually start doing this because I'm starting to get tired. Distribution of the masses. It is not granted many of us to remember complex forms. So in considering the human 
figure, it is better at first to think only of those major forms of which it is composed. And these may be thought of more uh, thought of and more easily remembered by a simple formula such as the following. So basically he's saying that our brains aren't made to uh, to remember complex forms, but there are tricks to simplify that makes them easier to remember. Uh, thank you for your words. I tried to do art with my toddler and bought some art supplies that we can both use. Now my son begins to have so much fun when we draw together. That is perfect. Can you guide how to draw a human figure? That's what we're working on here. So skip back and um, uh, skip back to episode one and start from there or get the book in addition or download it from somewhere and um, yeah, uh, follow along. So next part is considering the wedging and passing of forms from the front of the figure. <clears throat> so here it, so here we're going to draw along with what he's writing. The square of the ankle, which is a weird thing, passes into the triangular calf of the leg and this in ter uh, turn passes into the square knee. Okay. Uh, the square knee passes into the round thigh into the mass of the hips and that is one of the main solid masses, which in Bridgman's universe is a square. Okay. From the sides of which a triangular wedge enters the rib cage. That is this, is that a triangular wedge? No, it's this way entering the uh, rib cage, okay? The rib cage is oval, oval below, but approaches a square to the shoulders. Into the square enters the column of the neck, which is capped by the head. The head, when compared with the forms of the neck, is a square. This is the simplification that Bridgman does. And it looks utterly silly, but in here you can see how it goes from the square to round to wedge to round to square. Here you can see how it's more, it's rendered more in a more finished way. So we'll try to draw this and we'll try to start okay remember we should do the top and the bottom and then we try to fit the shapes more or less First the squares and then the that is like this. Something like this. Okay. Okay. So then we go from the we do the foot, which he doesn't describe for silly reasons. One of the good ways of finding out that this book is weirdly written 
is that there are so many things that would be described in a more detailed art book. So it's from the square to the triangle to the square to the roundness into the square of the hip. And then we do the same on the other side. Start with the foot. Uh, Okay, the soul breaker gets a time out for trolling. Uh, I should have moderators. Also, ska man sitta med en ritplock och så och följa med? Det är nog ingen som egentligen tycker att du behöver du lära dig att tegna. Jag tycker att jag behöver och lära mig att tegna. Det är, är den som uh, tycker det. So uh, uh, interesting comment here was uh, there's, there's probably no one thinks that you need to uh, learn how to draw, uh, which is sort of a compliment, and I appreciate that a lot. But I know that I need to learn how to draw. I know that I there's a lot of things which I'm very strong at. And there are a lot of things that I'm really weak at. And there are some things like anatomy which I'm proficient at, but I would like to be more than proficient. So now the round of the hip has gone into the square here, and then we have this wedge going into the round of the rib cage. Okay. And I start doing my own shit all the time here. Uh, what is your opinion on modern Japanese art? Uh, I know too little. Uh, so, so no opinion as a whole. Okay. Uh, it's not Swedish, it's not German, it is Norwegian. So again, here would be a square and then it would be a sort of a wedge then a triangle, and then a square, something like that. Same here. Wedge, going into the square, triangle, triangle, block. Okay, so uh, just excuse me a minute. I lost my eraser. So let's start erasing some of the scribbling here and just see if let's uh, let's try something different. Nope, not that different. Let's see. If we can simplify this with the brush and give it a sense of realism, even though it's a very
and let's do it very quickly but even though it's a very rough sketch let's try and see how it works and if we can get that correct rhythm of shapes and how they pass into each other. Your storytelling is very good. Ever thought about making comics and graphic novels? That was what I worked with uh, for years. But that was too hard for, especially for my mental health. And uh, I had to make the very hard decision of stopping my lifelong dreams of being a comic book artist and uh, failing and becoming a goddamn fine artist instead. Falling to the level of fine art. God damn it. So, yeah, a little bit stiff here and there. Uh, uh, but functional. Eh. Hvilke serier har du tekkenet? Ikke noe særlig på svensk. En del... Jeg gjorde mye for det norske Nemi-magasinet. Ikke selve Nemis tegneserien, men mye biserier og illustrasjoner. Jeg har gjort en adopsjon av Pikmans model. I can find that. Always good to promote the link. There is my comic book adaption of Pikman's model, H.P. Lovecraft. Nice comic. I like it. I think it's probably one of the best things I've done, even though I did it in 2012. So, so what we've done here is basically think about some of the shapes which we drew first in pencil. It's not perfect, but it is what it is. So now we've done that. Okay. Are you present with Tommy Tush? Tommy Tursch, yes, Walter kjenner jeg ikke personlig, møtt han. Considering the wedging and passing of forms from the rear of the figure, the head is square, capping around neck. Let's do this one as well. So the head is a square, a round neck, rib cage square at the shoulders, wedging into the neck. Ooh, the rib cage is wedging into the neck. Triangular below, wedging into square hips. Hva heter den tidningen med Lovecraft? Pikmans Model. You can find it for free use at archive.org. It's also up for sale at IndyPlanet. I-N-D-Y Planet.com I don't know if I've sold anything there for years, but you know. 
can you draw some black metal stuff sometimes so the, one of the things that are up on my uh, YouTube page is for instance the time-lapse of me drawing uh, the cover for Abbott Outstrider album uh, which I did together with uh, uh, Olav Iversen, who had the design and idea, and Francisco Munoz, who did the photo I based the art on. Uh, so, so there you have... There you have uh, uh, some black metal art for me. And I, I will, will probably do more, but... but yeah, I I think <clears throat> if you like, how should I say this? If you like some very influential black metal, early second wave black metal from outside of Scandinavia then uh, hopefully in a short while you'll get to see something really cool waiting for replies so mm -mm. yeah wedging into square hips the square hips rest on the round pillars of the thighs the teeth uh, knees are square the calf are, are triangular and the ankles square. So again, round shape, square shape, triangular square. Bathory Gulligaten. I uh, that's not some I like Bathory, but uh um Yeah. How many languages can I speak? Uh, Norwegian, English, and a tiny bit of Spanish. Okay. And then it is just some more sketches here, trying to show how the different parts are, how why this is a square, and why this is round, square, triangular, square, here, wedging into the square head. Okay. With that, I think uh, that was the last uh, uh, drawing I'll do for today. I will still be around and answer a question or two. Bather is good, but Quarton has been dead for 20 years, probably not releasing anything new. Yes. Um, while I'm waiting for questions, uh, I can say that if uh, you want to support what I'm doing, whether it, it be learning how to draw and hopefully teaching some of you a little bit about drawing, or it be the videos and the shorts, or it be it be uh, all the art for free use, you can support by giving super chats, by becoming a YouTube member. You can support on Patreon. You can support by purchasing things from denungeherholm.com or by just using my art. All my art is available for free use, so you can download it, print it, change it, and even sell it as long as you put my name on it.
Kan du testa ut och uh, rita krokibilder som uh, gamla övervektiga? Ja, det kan jag. Uh, vi gjorde en övervektig tidigare dag. Where is Jim? We did a chubby version of the same and show that it's the exactly the same principle still. Uh, <coughs> Uh, do you know Brothers of Metal, hearing this on Power Snake, and wonder if you can draw Jormund Gander someday? I do not know Brothers of Metal. Power Snake is a <laughs> fantastic name. I have drawn Jormund Gander, the Midgard Serpent, a bunch of times, and I will again. I wish I could draw every image I see in a grain of wood or tile or even a cloud. I mean, I, I don't think anyone can. Uh, but but you can draw cool stuff. And that's more of um, that's more important than being able to draw everything is to be able to draw fun stuff and have fun with it. Any final questions? Var du inne på platebutiken Helvete någon gång? Nej, var för ung. Jag nöjd stängta. Alltså, jag var väl 12 när kyrkan började att bränna kände någon lite äldre som var inne i black metal men jag var inte inne där för några år sedan. How do you work with these uh, simplified shapes uh, when the point of view and foreshortening are in conflict with the anatomy such as frog perspective with a knee towards the viewer? It's still the same. Um, um, Uh, so, if the knee is towards the camera and it's a sort of a frog perspective, then the shapes, the other shapes, are still the same. It is just the perspective that's different. The shapes are exactly the same, but their size is different. So still the round of the thigh going into the square of the... And now I'm describing the Bridgman style of drawing these. I'm not describing the style I'm doing all... Um, on all my own art because we all adapt these things to our own use. Are you friends with Scott Christian Sava? Yes, and we are doing, uh, uh, we started earlier this month with a regular monthly stream. So we get to hang out and draw together. Um, and that will be the first Saturday every month. Uh, Gustav Dore's copper stick till Don Quixote är intressant. Känner till mig Dore inte Don Quixote akkurat nu. Det är så. Okay, uh, I'm running out of mental energy. Uh, it's been really fun to stream with you guys. How long? We've been going for almost two hours. Uh, but it was fun and we got to do two chapters in the 
Bridgeman's Complete Guide to Drawing from Life. Uh, and I feel that I learned a couple of things, even though I have gone through this book many times before, ever since I was a kid. And I'm still learning some new things from it. And it's always good to go back and practice or to practice new stuff. I mean, when we get through this book, maybe I'll do something completely new that I don't know at all. By the time we, um, uh, we, we have gone through the whole of this book, I guess uh, uh, Scott Christian Sava will have become such a superstar that he has his own how to draw with, how to paint with watercolor and gouache book, and I can just learn from that. Okay, uh, it was fun. Uh, do check out denungeherholm.com. There are links in the bio, and also check out my videos, subscribe if you haven't, and become a YouTube member if you want.